And a final question, a final question today is from Mark Kenny. Uh, Mark Kenny from the Advertiser. Um, Lord Monckton, I'll take it from your uh, response to Mr Hart's question that uh, you reject that letter from the House of Lords. Um, I've told them it's impertinent and they should put my reply on their website. They have not so far found the courage to answer. All right, look, can I ask you a question which I, I guess is a first principles question uh, that would have been uh, maybe uh, better asked earlier, but uh, do you, would you like to see companies and individuals put less pollution skyward than is the case now and the, than will be the case with a growing population, or are you unconcerned about it? Right, let us distinguish between pollution, which usually means particulate pollution, such as soot, or the emission of carbon dioxide, which on any view is not a pollutant. It is plant and tree food. <laughs> if, you were, if we were able to manage a doubling of CO2 concentration this century, which is what I expect to happen regardless of the carbon tax, then what we would find is that at the end of the century, the yield of certain staple crops would rise by up to 40%, and they would be able to survive on less water as well. The greening of the planet in the 30 years since satellites have been watching, as a result of what is known as CO2 fertilization, is absolutely wonderful. It's actually gone up by 6%. The net primary productivity of plants has risen by 6%. So CO2 if you really are a green and you really want to green the planet, is the way to go. When I asked Moncton what the basis was for the claim that productivity of staple crops would increase by 40% by the end of the century, he couldn't provide it to me. The only thing he could give me was that he heard this number during a presentation by Dr. Leighton Stewart at the Alternative Climate Conference on Sunday, December the 6th in 2009. This was an event where a very select group had access to. For the presentation held by Dr. Stewart I couldn't find any transcripts or other materials, nor was there a response from Dr. Stewart to my inquiries for more information. Moncton also didn't remember anything about how this number was calculated or sourced. This means he has been repeating a number he doesn't know the basis for. However, let's focus on the numbers and statements made by Moncton. And by now it probably isn't a surprise that they are either incorrect or stretch a fact beyond what it is capable of being used for. It is true that CO2 in higher concentration can, and will, act as a fertilizer. For this very reason adding CO2 in greenhouses is used to increase productivity. But the 40% increase in productivity is way beyond what has been demonstrated as achievable by experiments outside of greenhouses. For plants like wheat, soybeans and rice the increase in productivity on average was found to be at 13%. For plants like corn and sugarcane it's 0%. The difference between the plants I mentioned is caused by how they use CO2 during photosynthesis. This is just the direct effect of CO2, which is already a lot lower than the number cited by Moncton. The advantage of CO2 fertilization is lost when you start to take into account the indirect effects more CO2 will have. There are many secondary effects, but I'll take just temperature as an example. If we double CO2 the planet will warm, according to the IPC, by about 3 degrees Celsius. And here's where the statement by Moncton that plants would be able to survive on less water will play a role. It is true that plants use less water if there's more CO2. However, this is a double-edged sword. Plants also use water to cool themselves. If temperatures go up, this means the plants will experience more heat stress which reduces productivity. If you start taking into account how weather and precipitation will change due to the increase in temperature, it becomes even more obvious that this increase in productivity is not achievable. The drought the US has been experiencing is what has been predicted by climate models. And if we keep increasing CO2 in the atmosphere, it is very likely to produce devastating droughts in the grain belt. Saying that CO2 is a fertilizer doesn't mean that there isn't a point where the effects become negative instead of positive. But he did get the 6% increase in total global plant productivity correct. He probably got this from the paper Climate Driven Increases in Global Terrestrial Net Primary Production from 1982 to 1999, which was published in 2003. 
Unfortunately, the droughts we've seen during the past for almost a decade on record have already caused a slight decrease in productivity. Results like this, combined with more advanced research on plants, is why scientists are saying that the increase in CO2 is not a good thing for food production.